Party every night? I'll teach you the power of shut the f up. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. When you buy a new house, you're lucky with considerate neighbors. These are the stories of neighbors who weren't, and how of course, the balance restored. We start off with noisy neighbors who like to blast music through the night. They refuse to turn it down. Until they face a Geneva Convention breaking device, that rattles their house until their vision blurs. Followed by noisy neighbors, who like to party loud every day. Yes, every single day for a whole year, even into the night. The partying stops however, when a true party pooping twist came knocking, that nobody saw coming. Lastly, the cherry on top for this episode. As some people seem to create vengeful brainwaves, that are frighteningly genius. In this story, a popular TV show suffers pro-revenge, when their manager mistreats a neighbor. Before we start, as the true party pooping villain you are, when you're planning to crash the like buttons tea party, make sure to walk around while secretly farting. Then be the first to complain. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts, might be disturbing to noisy neighbors. Flashback to 2014. I moved out on my own in 2013 and moved into an old house converted into a two-floor apartment, directly across from my future in-laws. The downstairs neighbors were loud. Blaring music at all hours, yes honestly, all of the hours, wouldn't cut the grass or take out the trash on our shared schedule. Crappy neighbors, but never bothered me directly though. The guy was pretty chill when sober and would turn the music down a little when I texted him. He was okay, until his girlfriend moved in. Now add shouting matches to the mix, and all of the sudden my request to turn down the music, makes him turn it up. I can barely walk on my super thin floor without her banging on the ceiling with a broom. I was doing fine at nights though, since I'm a heavy sleeper and could sleep through anything. My wife moved in, and I quickly found out that she is quite the opposite. Fan on turned at a certain angle in the doorway of the bathroom, door closed halfway, blackout curtains with them taped to the wall so zero light comes through, zero sounds other than the fan, you get the idea. I told her that we can't expect them to remain silent when she's ready for bed, we need to be reasonable, but the wall rattling music needs to stop during the night. She hated it during the day, but I told her there's nothing we can do at that time, so she would go to her parents house a lot during the day. I talked to neighbor guy, he said, Yeah man, that's cool. But it turns out, that it wasn't cool. The girlfriend wasn't having it and his attitude then changed too. Yeah well, it's our house, so you can go freak yourself if you think you can tell us what to do and you can move out if you don't like it. Something definitely had to change once she was pregnant, and then the baby came. So I did the only thing I could do. I fought fire with fire, and maliciously complied with the law to the T. I could only report them for noise after 11 PM. I now forget the morning hour when the noise could start, but I believe it was 9 AM. My dad has these huge old concert speakers in his garage. Professional grade, black leather bound, 5 feet tall and 3 feet wide, and a pretty nice, vintage stereo amplifier. He has two, but my apartment was so small, I only had room for one, sadly. We replaced our coffee table with this monster, laid face down onto our thin, office carpet. Tired of his crap tunes, I tested this Geneva Convention breaking device when they weren't home. Holy cow! I had to take everything down from tables, counters and shelves because they would shake off. I prepared audio files to feed the stereo monster. I was giddy like a kid with a new Christmas toy. I turned it on when I left for work and got my wife up to send her to her parents. I came home from work and hung out at her parents until it was close to bedtime. They resisted for three days. On day two, I found a pile of manure on my doorstep, but it didn't faze me. I cycled between sign slash saw slash square waves in clashing chords, marching music, Washington Post march on loop, preaching clips, they weren't just atheist, but outspoken anti-Christian, so it was a must, the most stupid songs you could think of, Captain Planet theme song, chicken dance, etc. This poor old house rattled in ways I didn't think possible. The vibrations from the sine wave would make your vision blur. I eventually got a text from him that read. Sorry man, you can stop now. I did not. He needed a few more days to let it sink in. Plus I had so much fun putting it together, would be a waste. They complained to the police and the landlord. There was nothing they could do, 
since I wasn't doing anything wrong. I didn't even hear music during the time of peace to follow. It was so quiet. They would build up their courage and try again every few weeks when I wasn't home, but my wife was. I then showed her how to tame the beast, so she could let it loose while I was away. I had to give them a spanking every now and then, but they learned. They were so happy when we moved out. I wanted to get into a specific neighborhood for years. Partly because my best friend lives there. Also because it was a couple blocks from my kid's school. Four years ago, I finally bought that house. It lived up to what I expected it to be, it was a good neighborhood. Then COVID hit. My neighbors across the street were forced to move at the beginning of the pandemic, before the eviction moratorium was in place. They were nice neighbors. We were friendly with each other and we were sad to see them go. So when the property owner rented to a new family, we were hoping we could cultivate a friendly relationship. Unfortunately that was not the case. About a month after they moved and the lockdown started. And that's when things went from 0 to 100, real quick. For the next year there was a huge party, every night, seriously. Cars down the whole street and music blasting so loud, you could hear it over regular house noises we made in every room of our own house. My friend, who lived in the next cul-de-sac, would text me regularly and ask if the music he was hearing was my neighbors. We tried to be civil. I asked politely. I brought them beer and I offered some killer 420. Eventually, they threatened me and my wife. So we started calling the police. Almost every night for four months. We organized with the neighbors. And they started calling the police as well. This led to other neighbors giving up and selling their houses. Yes, the renters were that bad. We were still upside down on our place, so it wasn't an option for us. After some time, the police told me that I needed to stop calling and that they couldn't deal with the issue. That I was a bigger nuisance than the renter's music. It was at that time the housing market was taking off. Houses were selling in my area for 40-50k over appraisal value. My wife and I looked at what we needed to make so we could move and listed our home for that. In three days, we received a handful of obscene offers to choose from. But it was the lowest offer that stood out to us the most. Their offer was a good 20k under the next lowest but, they also sent a letter. You must know, I'm a true sucker for letters, especially one with a picture of a young pregnant couple, with a dog. And a patrol car? Turns out, the young man is a police officer newly appointed at the local PD. And he takes his patrol car home. I knew at that point that this was the family to sell my house to, money be damned. I moved out as the neighbors were throwing a huge party. The next day the police moved in, and they haven't had another since. I drive by regularly on my way to my buddy's place. They just sit quietly in their garage looking bored. I make sure I honk and wave every time. I'm a college student in Portugal. I was born and raised in Azores, some little island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. In order to pursue college I had to move to the mainland, for this I had to rent an apartment. It was a good apartment, as it had three rooms, two bathrooms, a living room and a kitchen. It was in a quiet neighborhood which made me like it even more. This was until they started to do construction work in the apartment above. This construction work is done by a TV show called, Carido Mudiaya Casa, that literally translates to, Honey, I changed the house. It's quite famous here, they remodel the entire house replacing everything in it with new furniture, new floor, you get it. While doing all this, they make a lot of noise. I'm not the party kind of guy and I'm quite calm and peaceful. I like to stay home, have some friends over, drink a bit, play some games. Besides, I have to do a lot of my college work at night and since I spend most of the day in class, I have to do homework, at my apartment. Portugal has a law, which states that you can make noise from 8am to 6pm. Most of my classes start around 11 12 pm, which works great for me, since I go to sleep around 4 am due to all the work I have to do. They started drilling the floor at around 8 am, every single day. Me and my housemate were shocked by the amount of noise they were making, but we let it pass since they shouldn't take more than a week to replace the floor. I made that assumption, because my dad and I had to do it in our house back on the island. My assumption, was dead wrong. The noise lasted for the entire time they were there, I got a bit upset since I couldn't sleep, but I also couldn't leave the college work undone. So I decided to try and talk to them. I went to the upstairs apartment and knocked, then came this really fat short guy, 
looking at me like I wasn't even there, and the talk went like this. Hi, I'm from the apartment below. What do you want? I was gonna ask if you guys could start the drilling at around 10 a.m. I'm a college student and I do most of my work at night, sometimes I only get to catch some sleep during the morning. Would this be possible? Nah, we have a job to do, you should go to sleep earlier if you want to sleep. He closes the door on me, I was pissed but remain calm, after all it kinda is my fault if I go to bed at that time. Some time goes by and the noise continues, I get grumpier and grumpier, I call the customer service of the show. They said politely, that there is nothing they can do about it since it's in the legal rights, they advise me that I should talk with the guys in the apartment so we can come to a conclusion ourselves. Weeks go by and I'm wondering, that fucking apartment is the same size as mine, how the fuck are they taking so long? Until a glorious morning when I wake up, as I follow my normal routine. I go to the bathroom to take a shower, when I turn the light on I see it. My bathroom covered in clay, everything completely dirty, rocks everywhere and a hole right on top of the toilet. I'm furious, my housemaid arrives home that morning, he is not what you would describe as a calm person when it comes to situations like this. Yet I tell him all about it and we both proceed to the upper apartment, as I convinced him to let me talk, to which he agrees. I knock on the door. To my surprise, the same fat guy, but this time he was actually looking at me. Um, you guys opened a hole in my bathroom. He then interrupts me. Yeah yeah, we know, we already covered our part. Okay, but what about ours? Can't you guys fix it? I mean, you are men, can't you fix the house? My friend is furious, but I calmly put my hand on him and keep talking. No way, you broke it, you're gonna fix it, unless we have to call the landlord and sue your show for this. Okay okay, we will fix it, no need to get all formal. When we got back to our place, we could hear them making fun of us through the hole, which made my friend more agitated. Yet I'm calm, because I already thought of a way to get back at them. Couple of days go by when they finally decided to fix the hole, two nice guys came down and fixed it, said they were sorry and everything. We chatted, they were cool, but my revenge was already planned. Sorry nice dudes. Me and my friend both have JBL speakers, the good ones that can play really loud. This is where it begins. Every day I started to go to bed early now, so I can be up at 8 AM, first I take a shower and set up for college. Then I plug both of the speakers to my laptop, search for X-rated Japanese videos. You know, because Japanese girls can be really loud with a high-pitched voice. Leave the volume to the maximum and let it play in a loop until I get home, which was around 6 PM. I was speechless, my housemate agreed with this since we both started to leave the apartment earlier. Until one day we heard a knock on our door. It was the fat guy. Hey, I don't know what you're doing but it has to stop, we're recording today and we can't have those weird noises in the background. They record the episodes in the house so they can authenticate the sound in the house and everything, they could easily use a studio for the sound, but I guess they are really cheap on saving money. So I respond, nah, since you are in the legal right to make noise from 8am to 6pm, I am too, I can make the noise I want in that period of time. That will really hurt the show and you know that, people love this show, probably your mother watches it and loves it. Maybe, but she knows how things are around here so she doesn't really mind, just like me, I don't really mind and the landlord doesn't mind either. Can't you fix it yourself? The fat guy goes mad, starts stomping the ground as he turns around and leaves. This continues, I see the camera crew arriving from my window, they enter the apartment, then knock on my door. I was home for vacation but it didn't bother me really, just put my headphones on and cancel the noise out during my activities. I didn't even answer, just some loud lewd noises all day. This goes for three days straight with the camera crew, but one day they never tried again. I think the episode was cancelled due to the noise. The funniest part is that they invested in this construction for the show, but it ended up being free for the people living there. The only revenue they gained is from the viewership of the episodes. It puts a smile on my face, when I think about how they wasted a chunk of their budget, all for nothing. Sweet revenge. You stay till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. I want to take this moment, to thank you, I really appreciate you, because you bring me a great amount of joy. Subscribe for future uploads and show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button, without mercy. 
Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.